Hello my cool students and hello to everybody out there. Welcome to this tutorial where we will create this hair dryer in Fusion 360. Um, this will be a mixture of freeform uh, surface and solid modeling. It depends on course where we will model and I'm not sure if we are doing uh, every detail as you see here from the pictures but uh, I will do the rough form of course and uh, yeah I, I will see how we get along and yeah let's go right into it with inserting a canvas here we go we need hair dryer side I put this here in this plane Okay, and we're doing a rough calibration. We will again work with a mixture of measures and um, freeform. So let's calibrate. And we have a distance roughly from here to the outer side or the inner one let's take the inner one um, of 210 millimeters and I position that here where's my origin here that my origin is going more or less here in the middle because I will do some rotation work mm, yeah somewhere around there and I think we could start I will create an extra component so create new component I call this body Okay, and oh, I will move um, again my my canvas because I'd like to have my starting point of uh, my first sketch and all this stuff here in the origin. So let's create our first sketch. We'll use here the side plane starting with a construction line from beginning from the origin and we take it 210 long press x for construction line and then we'll go up here with another line 26 millimeters also construction line and one here with 36 um, this will help us just to um, create more or less with a measurement uh, here at um, this point for example when I use also measurement to create here the front part and um, sometimes yeah it's helpful to use measurements of course you can do this also with free form but um, I will do a mixture I will uh, create this area here with a surface the bottom the handle I will create with free form then afterwards so you get a little bit of um, different techniques um, here of course we are a little bit shorter than it's um, than it is actually we will uh, create a special form and uh, another revolve stuff here later because you see it's also it has a little bit of different angle between here and here and um, yeah that's the thing we will fix here later so we need a fit point spline and we snap it here to this position and be sure that you use 
as less points as possible. So actually I'm just using here two in between and then I'm connecting here to the end point. Seems quite well. Actually, of course, when you need to modify here the curve flow with the tensions, then please do so. Mine, actually, I'm happy. Finish my sketch. We will check here this as freeform rotation stuff. So create form and then we will create a revolve again from this profile and this axis. The reason why is that I get here now my um, edge loops where I can modify the form down here a little bit. On the top it's perfect but yeah here it's a little bit flat, more flat. That's the reason why I'm using that. Um, let's check if we could use less faces. It's always as less as possible. And you see, mm, yeah, that could be good because I moved them up here. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm fine with this kind of face splitting. Hit OK. And the only thing I do now is I just mm, I take the whole edge loop and press E for edit. And I will scale it here in the middle just a little bit and push it up again. Let's check here in the right view. Maybe a little bit more. No, it's too much. Also here I could oops here I could do a little bit of scaling and move it up again so that I have more of the form here and here this kind of um, fillet we will uh, combine later of course and then I will hit here my last edge loop maybe mm, I'm just trying to now give it a little bit of rotation and see how yep. be aware that you don't change the perfect circular form so always do the scaling here in the middle and not moving singular points and yeah I'm hitting somewhere here in between because now I use this then as ra um, rail. So moving it up that it looks good here. Maybe I scale this a little bit more. So it's just a little bit of fine tuning. Yeah. And when you're happy with it then finish the form and now we have a surface anyway you see the here bodies just a little bit modified surface then we will create this round cap at the end for that we will create a new sketch also in this this front plane here and we will do a projection. So create, project, select here this geometry with, yeah, you can either use here entities or bodies, doesn't matter. Um, now select the, the bodies and hit OK. 
Now I get my purple line. See this here? And then we will create a um, perpendicular sketch on here. And you, when you slide along this line, you get here at one point this triangle, what means I'm in the center point of this line. This is where we start. And be sure that you go here perpendicular. Uh, when you go here 90 degrees, you see this little blue line coming up. And we'll do somehow seven, seven millimeters. And you must have this little red, uh, red, uh, gray T here. Otherwise, use the perpendicular constraint when you select this line and this one. So yes, of course, it's already perpendicular. So this is our construction line. Then I'll create another one actually from here to here, uh, which is also 90 degrees. It's just a construction line for helping to make the next curve. Um, how is it called? Tangent. So, so this is also, you see this T here, okay. And then we'll create a three point arc from this point to that one. And you see here when I, it snaps actually uh, into tangent mode when I'm here. So you could snap here or when you, when your form is too, too high or something then just use the tangent constraint, select the line and select the curve. And so here my tangent constraint symbol is popping up and that's what we need. Okay, this has to be tangent here. Then finish our sketch. We are in the surface menu and we will create a revolve from this profile here and our axis is our construction line we had and so we get our nice rounded formed and here and that's actually what I'm happy with then let's go on to this part here and don't forget to save your scene. My hair dryer. Switch here in tutorial projects. Um, and good, go on. I'm switching back here into the solid menu for creating a form. Then create a cylinder. Select the bottom plane and when I'm snapping here at the origin I can move here my mouse mouse somewhere and you get this blue dotted line so that I'm in the middle um, axis and so there I set somewhere my middle point then we will create I just click here somewhere at 43 and then I just stretch it down to the bottom and yeah somewhere here hit OK and then I'm editing my form a little bit more so with the E key, move down, so, and I'm switching here into the side view. And remember for scaling always use the middle point here because this, scale, this scaling is just scaling in one direction and this one in the middle is scaling all around the circle. So be aware that so I know that view is yes. 
just a little bit of scaling and moving. And maybe this is actually the time when we need a second canvas because this form isn't perfectly round in all directions. So I think it would be a good time to add a canvas. So I'm just doing the rough forming here. Remember, we will create this uh, later on with a little bit of um, filleting. So don't mind about that, just model it more or less straight so that it connects the other form here. Um, so it doesn't look too bad here from the side. Let's see if I could in insert here a canvas. Insert from my computer. I take here the back view, open, select this view to get it in. Hit OK and then we will edit the positioning maybe a little bit. It doesn't seem to look too bad. I'm just doing a quick calibration. So from here to here it is about 91. It's just helping us and then I edit my canvas a little bit more that you see here the body is popping up. I think I'm fine with that. And hit OK. And then I can do a little bit more adjustment here. And there I will scale now with Just that, that is fine here. And here, so we have not a perfect circle shape. Then we'll finish our form. And let's see how we can get this radius here. And for that we have to switch here to the normal menu and trim the surface off which is somewhere inside there. So be sure that nothing is selected, then go to the Trim tool. The first time we will select this surface. And then let's search for the little part here inside. And this is getting red and this is the one uh, which will be deleted. Hit OK. So now the first part is gone. And, but there is a second one. So this face, there's also here in this ring, the second one. And so nothing is selected. Then go to the trim tool. Now select that one the first time and then select this little circular form shape in here. You see, it's getting red. Hit okay. And now you see that 
there is actually a hole there. So you need these two trim steps that everything is going away and you need to do that otherwise the fillet uh, won't work. So then we will do a patch here in the front and at the bottom so we close the surface here and we close it here at the bottom go to patch select hit ok you could reverse also the normals this this face okay so everything is gray then let's stitch these two surfaces together so that's the reason or the basics that we can do a fillet afterwards so stitch and select both be sure that the ring here in between is green the others um, I will stitch later so hit OK then go to modify fillet and select this surface here and then I'm switching into the right view and change the radius type from um, constant if constant is in it to a variable and then you can select points where you uh, want to set a radius and I select the very right point and the very left point you see here point 25 and point 75 and then you can just move the the arrows and what it is important when you want to do good models is that you always try to find surface connections here in uh, with continuity curvature G2. So you see it's getting even more smooth out from the uh, other surface and you might have to adjust again a little bit your radius and I will take here 16.1 and 24 here. Hit OK. And then I will create the sketches to do some cuts. So be sure that your body here is selected and create a sketch and select this plane here. I'm already in the right view. Switch off the bodies so I can see it a little bit better. The first one is just an arc and you set it somewhere actually outside your body and just adjust the points a little bit or the curvature whatever so that it fits here more or less the picture that's the first one and the other ones I will create out of lines and fillets and that is always the thing that you, sh you should do could you do it with lines with arcs with fillets and the last thing you uh, consider it is fit point spline so I'll start with a line I'm not sure if this is perfectly straight or vertical so I won't do it perfectly vertical just check it should go beyond your body and of course, don't hide the body, this one. Uh, it should be longer because we will set here some radiuses and I will cut away the other parts anyway. Then press L again to activate line tool again. Then set another one here and another one here be sure that it uh, won't connect somewhere okay I don't want to have any constraints on it and I will just move them right into place where I might need them so 
something like that. And for that one, I will create a big arc. Also set it somewhere outside and also somewhere here and put an arc. Then just check the points or the position and a little bit radius so that you can fit more or less your image. Maybe I should set the radius position a little bit different. So, now I'm happy. Then I enter a trim tool because I want to trim away here some parts. Of course, uh, the fillet would also do this work. And then go to the fillet tool. And so I just have to select the point. This one, fillet of 10, is fine. Another one here, I take 7 or something. And here, I think 30 would be fine. Then finish the sketch. At this position I'd like to mention that I won't do this part here. Of course I did it to try what is the best version to show you but this is quite a tricky thing. I just slide through it quickly that you see a little bit of the process. So got my sketches here. Um, what I did is actually I deleted here a surface part and created so zoom in a little bit. See here created a cut then deleted uh, created here a, a new patch surface deleted this stuff and also with a patch I created this part this was fine actually but the problem afterwards was uh, creating a solid body or creating thickness and this all didn't work well so um, I don't have a perfect solution yet actually so I duplicated uh, also to the other side okay this worked but then here the thickening or um, making it solid give it material was uh, then yeah okay uh, was I wasn't happy with that to show you and to show you a perfect and uh, well working um, process how to do this so I decided to leave it in that in this tutorial uh, if I find a perfect solution one day I will let you know of course um, you can't do it but I don't have a good um, thickness method afterwards because a fusion can't calculate this stuff here and has a lot of problems and just don't do what I'd like it to do so yeah that's the reason why I just leave it and show you the easygoing version just wanted to say and before I do my split body work here I will create a um, solid body and for that just hiding my sketches the canvas selecting all the surfaces that we have and go to stitch uh, there should be green lines everywhere otherwise you might have to change your tolerance here for example I think yeah um, 0 0.1 wouldn't be enough here at my back just be aware that you got a solid body now and switch back to this menu here and I will create also a fillet here mm, constant one maybe three yeah 
and this looks fine okay and then before I do the cut I will create a shell on both ends here so select this circular faces and go to shell and give it one millimeter of inside thickness and you see I'm getting my thickness on both sides and when I just have a check here in my section analysis I see that so somewhere here I can scroll through it and have my thickness here and now I'm cutting the geometry so switch off analysis switch on the sketches and go to split body select the body then splitting tool the first one okay and split the body again split body now the back part and activate my sketch again this one okay and now you have three different bodies and I will create some little fillets on it mm, there we go just tiny tiny little fillets take 0 0.3 or 2 okay and then select the other side maybe I take you a little bit more okay and also here the first one and the second one looks fine to me and this will get another color in later on maybe I'll do this one a little bit thicker the first one takes 1.4 switch off here see this nice little detail And now we will add here this hexagonal holes that we have and we activate our hex catch. You see that uh, you can do this also with um, the rendering but the problem is it will always look um, uh, you have a double-sided um, face and it will never look perfectly correct and it's always more beautiful when you model it so that's the reason why we create all this hexagonal stuff here not that difficult just one shape and we will duplicate this and uh, make it cut out for that we will need a new sketch plane and I will activate here this sketch because I need this line because this offers a perfect position for a new sketch then uh, construct um, plane at angle and I select this line and I get my sketch plane where I want to have it without anything else and then um, 
right click create sketch and I'm just selecting here the plane and look at so my positioning is right then I need a circle that's my first starting here in the middle and because I'll do a little bit of offset where I don't do the, the hexagonal mesh so I take 64 here and I will also prepare the base for the hexagonal mesh um, for that I will um, use here just um, use this direction no let's use that doesn't matter switch off all my bodies here and this is just so like the plane just a construction line X on the keyboard and a switch also off the other sketch so I can't get confused so easily then we will create a polygon and we will use you see here um, circumscribe uh, and in some inscribed polygon and we will use an inscribed the difference is actually where the distance is measured okay on a corner or on a flat position and that's the reason why I'm taking inscribed placing here in the center and type in two because two will be my uh, diameter here and I rotate it that it snaps somewhere that it is straight and um, up here and if you may have to change the number to six so that we get a hexagon and I also make this outer line a sketch line we will need that in a minute And before I copy it, I need the distance between here and here because this is a little bit bigger than the distance here. So I press D on the keyboard and select the center point and this line and so I get the distance here. And with this 1.732, I just leave that, I will um, calculate the distances to my duplicated hexagons. So. First duplicate. I just double click and select the edge, press Command C, Command V so that I get a copy and I move my object now four point four six four. Why? Um actually the double of this okay plus one millimeter that's so I get one millimeter of distance in between here that's our first thing and then I select both of them of course I could do a, a pattern but because I'm just doing one duplicate and I will use the rectangular pattern in a second so now I do, uh, selected both again Command C, Command V, and now I'm moving here four or minus four, sorry, minus four, and the x distance now is two. Uh, no, sorry, not two. 2.5 no still not working not the right measurement um, okay I need the one point calculating again the 1.7 plus a half 
millimeter. It's a little bit tricky. So 2.232. Now we get our perfect positioning for everything here and hit OK. Then we finish our sketch. Get back all my bodies again. And now the first thing I do is I split my body here. Just hide all the others. This is my body to split and the splitting tool is when I can catch the line. Maybe I have to reactivate it so that it's not a construction line. Okay, sorry, I have to go back into the sketch, edit sketch, finish sketch again, split body, this one, and now it's working so that I can select the sketch line in here and I get my body here, split it, okay. So I'm hiding everything. Now I have this one here, getting my sketch back. Now I'm using here extrude and select the four profiles that I got here. Select symmetric and I just want to make sure that it's going through the whole thing here and operation set to cut. Good, okay. And now we have just a little bit of duplication work. Now actually just use a pattern. So go to create pattern, rectangular pattern. Type is features and we will select our extrude feature that we just did. Then the directions is here one, two. So when I select one of these axes, I get the two directions. So I'm just pulling the arrows somewhere. Then I'm changing here to direction type symmetric in both directions, symmetric. The distance type is set to spacing and I'm just moving it a little bit more and now I need my calculated values out of the first 1.7 stuff and here I need a distance then of 8.928. This is the, no this was the wrong one I guess, uh, I need this here. Because here I need, just need 8 and here I need the 8 point. It depends on which arrow you took or which axis. So 8.928. And you see it seems to be perfect. I just need more of quantity. So let's see how much we need that everything is cut. Nine are enough here and oh maybe we take ten. So nine in each direction and yeah be sure the distance you may um have to switch it, depends on yeah which one you selected first, but these are the numbers that you need for perfect spacing. And um, set here compute options to identical, so Fusion um, has a little less work. Hit OK. Here we go. Our pattern is finished.
Easy, actually. Then let's go to the buttons. I activate my canvas here so that I can see where they are. And we will create a sketch plane here along this line because when we have a look in the view, they are not perfectly vertical, so they are more along this line here. That's why we will create a construction line plane at angle and let's see if we could select no but we could maybe yes so i activate the sketch where this line is in and then i can select it and you see i got my sketch plane here hit okay so now i can hide the sketches again and I will create a sketch on this plane I just created and if the camera doesn't rotate then select the plane and say look at. So then so deactivate my plane again and we will start with hiding all the bodies and create a construction line here from from the center point just going up or down just that we have a starting point press X the keyboard and then let's see where we will start our first line here and I think a little bit here higher than my fillet is ending here so get again switching to the front view and let's snap just a snap somewhere. I have to hide the bodies and then it will snap somewhere. So I'm just placing it now somewhere and give it a um, length of 11. And now I activate my bodies again. And with the move key, I'm just checking okay, where do I need it? And I think. This height is not too bad. Okay. Just want to look at the plane perfectly. Then I will create also a second line from this point going down 12 millimeters that X on the keyboard because oh, I got the wrong so switch off the so this one should be a construction line if I could get it so I stay on it sketch line now it's the second one yes press X and with uh, three point arc starting from here to here creating more or less here an arc then I will mirror this to the other side this is my mirror plane or mirror line okay and here the points aren't tangent so go here to the tangent constraint and select both of them so now we get the constraint symbol and we have a perfectly rounded sketch here there is a fillet but i will create this later on in the process because um of filleting work on the button it's easier when i leave this now as a sharp corner 
then create another line just to uh, define the distance because we have six millimeters to when the next button starts and we'll go to the front view and then we will create a slot and I will take an over, overall slot because there I have the dimensions from the not from center to center where I would have it here. I it does the same actually, but it's starting from the very beginning um, at the curve to measure it. That's what I need now. So I'm starting at that point, then going down 25 millimeters, and we have a width of 10 millimeters. Good. And this one we will just copy it. So I double click, Command C, Command V, and I move it. I need a max distance minus. That's what I need. So hit OK. So now let's create some more forms for the buttons that we will need in a minute. Um, we will create a slot and now we'll take a center point slot. The reason why is because where is the start at the end and that is what I need now. Center point because uh, somewhere here you see with the triangle popping up there is the center of this sketch here. Then I need um, a length of 6 and a diameter of 8. This will be actually then later on the front part of our button and we will copy the button later on. So I just do this one and then copy it and for this one this will be the, the button actually and for the hole we need to have fillets here but uh, we have to do it a little bit different because at the button we will do the fillets later and at the hole we will do the fillets now. The reason why I will explain in a second. So we need an offset from all these edges here. Just a tiny one inside, so minus 0.1. Okay, not minus, plus. See that? Maybe a little bit more that you see it better. And hit OK. And we have to delete here the connection, the offset connection. So this is the symbol for that. And I just click on it and hit delete. So that this is a way because I now need to, to do here at the outer sketch, this will be the hole, I need to do a fillet and I don't want the fillet on the inner side and this would happen if I don't delete the constraint. So go to fillet and select the outer point and also on the other side. And finish the sketch. Okay, don't be weird about the, that. Um, so get my bodies back, my, all my sketches. Now, hide my canvas here and also hide the bodies. We will do some extrudes now. The first, select the full profile and here be aware that you select all the profile parts which are connected here to that round form. Then activate my bodies again and 
I want offset from the plane where I did the construction. I use an offset here of 16. No, actually, I don't need an offset mm. because I'm just setting it to cut and actually wouldn't need an offset. 16 is too much. So I just want the geometry to be cut out and this will happen. So, okay. And we will create our top button here. For that we will do another extrude. And now be sure that you take the profile parts which are connected. Mm, a bit difficult to select here. hide the bodies so it's easier so this part here not the outer parts and set the operation to new body now we set an offset plane here it makes sense of course and not else we take 11 and an offset of 16 No, it takes in too much because the button has to be somewhere inside. No, let's take 10 and I think 11 is fine for the length. When I hit the right view, yes, that's fine. Okay. And now I'm doing Adding my sketch. I'm doing the fillet and the reason why I'm doing the fillet here afterwards is because it creates a better form. Not for that, that would be fine. And here we just check how much fillet we need. Maybe 2.5 2 is enough here so that I have just a little, little bit of space between. Yes. And the second fillet here in front, this will create quite well because we just did this fillet. Um, so I select the face and then fillet and here you see this won't work in that um, kind if we would have done the fillet in the sketch. So we will take here the maximum. This is something about 5.4 and hit OK. Looks quite good. And the second button. Let's get my sketch back. So select both of the sketches and go to Extrude. Then we will set an offset of 15 millimeters and an actual extrude distance of 1. So we're just starting the extrude here somewhere here and just hiding the bodies that you see it a little bit better. That's the offset of 15 millimeters and a one millimeter thickness. Be sure that the operation is set to new body. Okay. And then now we'll hide here everything because we now need a new sketch on the side plane. So create a sketch on this plane here. And we need to project this button because we need some helping lines to create this shape here, this rounded. 
and so first project and select selection filter is bodies so select this one and OK and then we'll create two lines from this point here and you see we got a perpendicular constraint so that we have 90 degrees here and we need here seven millimeters make it a construction line you see here a little t perpendicular and a second one also here at the bottom also try to find the snapping the perpendicular one and seven millimeters okay construction line I create another line and you see it's jumping here at the midpoint with this triangular symbol and I create also be aware that it's perpendicular you see this little symbol popping up and maybe we take here four millimeter of a helping line also press X and now we can create our perfect arc from both ends and here snapping to this point and now we have perfect shaped form then we finish finish the sketch so hide my canvas and out of this sketch i will just create a surface so switch here to the surface menu and go to extrude select the profile change here to symmetric and just scale it up a little bit for something like that because we will cut away really not too much we will cut away then a little bit of it so new body yes okay and now we use this line that we created before to cut here the perfect form and for that to activate the trim tool select the profile and now you can select the parts which should be trimmed away so i select the outer stuff here and okay and now i have my front form of the button and what i can do now is i switch back to my solid body and i will create a loft between these two surfaces so loft select this profile and the second one and we'll get a perfect connection it looks awesome you see here it's flickering this is big i will hide in a second because the profile is still there uh, yeah join is fine okay and when i hide or you can of course remove this helping profile and you got a perfect looking button now we will add a fillet of course for the rest of perfection so maybe one millimeter yes this looks fine okay maybe so if you've seen sometimes and then I just duplicate this body so I select it command C command V and no it didn't work now it worked set distance of minus 31 and I will just check the canvas here and push it out a little bit so that it is more or less in one nice line with the others. Hit OK. And now I'm happy with all my buttons. Then let's go to an easy part. 
and we'll do this front thing here and for that I could actually create no I won't create a new component you could but actually I don't mind so um, for that we will reactivate our first sketch because so we remember we had I think 26 of a radius here and we need the same of course so we are creating a new sketch no actually we could use the sketch let's use it so edit the sketch and the only thing we will add here is a new distance here so let's take actually in nature we have 65 but no let's take 60 as a length here I set this to a construction line and we will We use a fit point spline here because I want this to be tangent and I need a little bit more of a control. So, oh no, sorry, use the arc fit point spline. One point here, one in the middle, and one connecting here. Okay. This one, this green line, I set it vertical, so uh, it's automatically tensioned because I will do a revolve. And here I use a tensioned constraint, selecting this line and then that one. And now I have a tensioned flowing transition. And I just moved this a little bit, so don't mind about that. We will cut away um, a little bit of this form and later on with the second part here. So this looks fine to me. Finish the sketch. And we will use a revolve here. Select the profile select the axis and create a new body I'm just hiding all the other stuff here so this is our first part and for the second one we will create an offset plane actually from this one here so I select it or just select the it's also the origin so it doesn't matter offset plane and I offset this plane let me see um, I take take a little bit more 66 and let's create a sketch on this offset plane and we'll use a slot here and a center point slot because the origin is here perfect for starting and so click here somewhere in the middle and then go down here we will take 35 for the length and 21 for the diameter so let's check in the image yeah not too bad and we need actually more or less the same on this plane here so let's create another sketch on this one here 
have to finish the other sketch, sorry. So finish the sketch, then create a new sketch in this plane and again a center point slot. Here we just take, I'm not sure, maybe 15 in the length and also 21 in the thickness. I'll check here in the sketch. Now the could be even smaller. Let's take 10. Yeah, 10 is good. Finish the sketch and I hide here the body in the middle and I'll create a loft between these two sketches. Loft, one profile, second profile, here we go, nothing else do we need here. Uh, looks good to me. Actually, we could combine that. Yes, combine that. Could have done here in one step, but also do it here. Join. Okay. And you see it, it. We have a little bit of an arc here. So going into my right sketch again. Maybe activate. No, let's do a new sketch. So. A new sketch and mm, let's do a projection because we need a little bit of guidance. So project and select the body here, hit OK. And what we need is some lines, helping lines that we could create this arc perfectly. So I'm starting a line here and it's perpendicular and also horizontal and I take it here 8 millimeters to the inside. Make it construction line and again also here at the bottom also a horizontal line. Exit and I create a three-point arc then in between and here it is snapping also quite nice to that we have a tangent midpoint here so we will use that when you want to use here the center point and not snapping you have to slide here to the origin then I get this blue guidance and you could also do that okay fully fine so I'm doing somewhere in between finish the sketch and the only thing that we will do is just do a split body select the body select the line split it and I'll get rid of the front part here and then we will create a shell so selecting this face and the one at the back shell one millimeter looks good to me Okay, and what's always good, of course, I'll do some filleting here and here and also this. Especially when you see it, I do just small fillets, so maybe 0 0.3, so that 
the light gets caught here or even 0.4 and also do a fillet here this would also be good so this one I'll take here even two or three millimeters and be sure that you put it to curvature it always looks even smoother maybe we can increase to five yes curvature I'm happy with that so looks good to me before I start with the last thing, the cable connector, I just organized my scene a little bit. I named all the stuff and I just saw that I actually could reconnect here the cap with the hexagons because this is actually one part. So I'm just taking both of them and do a combine operation and join the two bodies so now that we have one cap now the rest is fine they are separate bodies and I will create a compo new component for this one here just to keep it a little bit more organized of course you can just do a new body new component but I have a lot of sketches already and so I want to have a little bit of more organization. So cable connector and yeah actually it could be parent here so don't mind or just click and drag put it there if you want it the same history so it is active the cable connector then we'll create an offset plane offset plane and we'll offset the bottom plane here at about 1 minus 156 actually I want to get somewhere here at this point and in my sketch it's around this you have to check then if where your image is and then I create a sketch on it and I'm creating a circle starting here from the I hover just the origin and then going down here because I just want to be somewhere here next to this position. I will move it anyway, so don't mind. And the diameter is here 32. And just switching to the right view, you see you should be here at the corner of this um, thing here. And I may use a little bit smaller diameter, so it depends how your image looks like. So I take 31, it's also fine. And I just move it that switching off the canvas so that in the right view it should be more or less touch touching here, okay? Don't going inside just a little bit, something like that. Yeah, that's fine. Could be a little bit longer than here because there will be a fillet afterward, but this position is quite okay. And I do actually a second circle. On this position and um, 
I'm too lazy to create a new sketch, so I could also just activate the 3D sketch. And so hit OK to be at the same position. And I create another circle here in the middle with a diameter of 10. And I'd like to move it down but I think this won't work because it's connected. Let's see. Yeah. So there is the constraint here. See that? I'm just clicking on the symbol. If I got it, yes. And delete it. And now it's not constrained anymore. And hit M. And now I can... Mm. No, I can't. I can. I just got the wrong thing. And we are moving that down. Let's see here. Where are we going to land? 80. Minus 80. Don't mind about the positioning, I'll leave it here straightly under or below the other circle. Finish the sketch. And I'll create a new one. This time on the side view. And we'll do a projection, so project, selection filter, entities, and select both circles, and hit OK, because I need the connection points here. And then just creating with two arcs, connecting here, more or less, with a little curvature. Here it looks fine because it's following my my other curvature here. And finish the sketch. And we'll do a sweep here. No, as a loft, sorry. Loft taking the top pro profile and the bottom profile. And the rails are now my sketches that I just created. And I got perfect, nice shaped form here. OK. And when I have a look here at the top view, I see that my, my form might be a little bit too small here. Um, and I'm switching back to my body and activate it here on so that I got my timeline back because what you can do if also your body is a little bit too small I'm just going back to this form here the very beginning and I can edit this a little bit so I'm just taking here these forms by just scaling it a little bit. Let's see also if I have to scale it a little bit here and move it so it shouldn't go outward but here it should be actually more or less nearly touching. Just scaling up a little bit. Uh, maybe it was too much because here at the back it 
can see how it's going inside. Let's back to the side view. Yeah, not too bad. And also here, not too bad. Yeah, finished the form and now Fusion is calculating, see here, all the steps afterwards and this should work fine that everything is yeah this is a point where i really love fusion so that everything is calculating well here maybe it was a little bit too much so going back again Yes, I will cut away um, these lower parts anyway, but here at the top shouldn't cut. Finish form. Yes, perfect. This is how it should look like. So more space here at the back and less space here at the side and at the front. I'm switching back to my cable connector here and if you want to do it even more precise edit the sketch also move this one just a little bit more finish sketch yeah now I'm happy with that then I select the top plane here and create an extrude with four millimeters and a taper, taper angle of minus 50. This is my goal that I'm aiming here. See that? that I got this nice shaped form here. And operation is set to join. Be sure that you're really working in an extra component because otherwise it will also join with the upper bodies and I don't want that, of course. Hit OK. Then we will do a little cut here. But when you have the feeling that this is a little bit too high, you could also do a little press pull here and take this face and push it down a little bit and um, find it somewhere here in the middle where the cut should be because in real life it's just a straight cut it seems here because of the perspective that it is curved no it isn't so feel free to push it down if necessary and then create a new sketch on the side plane here and the only thing I just do is create a line from here to somewhere here where the connection point is I'm just going a little bit down and of course you can adjust the position a little bit so I think I'm doing something like that. Finish the sketch and then we'll cut away a little bit of geometry here everywhere. And the first thing we split the body, this one, with this line. 
hit OK and we'll get immediately rid of this body so remove and then we will cut also the parts away here just go to activate split body again I select both of them and I have to reactivate my sketch so Where's my sketch? Oh, here it is. So activate the sketch and then, no, not combine, split body. Now select both of them and select the line, hit OK. And now I got here these two parts, just remove them and let's create some fillets here at the body, so hide my sketches and I'll do the fillets here separately. So one going to do here, just a small one. 0.3 seems a little bit weird here but when you do a second fillet on this one here and I'll do it a little bit bigger one you see it's not too bad actually pivot one looks nice and then I will leave the rest and of course I will now do this decoration line and also this one and for that I'm just reusing my side sketch here and creating some some lines actually I'm just doing a straight one here Okay, and then with a pattern, rectangular pattern, select here my line and go down and I need, oh, I set here my distance type to extend. So I'm finding here perfect position and minus 30 seems okay here and we need five of them hit okay and then I will also create here a fit point spline I can use the position that's snapping to the curve it's also fine and I'm just doing two in the middle and the last one I'm connecting here back to the curve and maybe you want to adjust it I'm trying to do it somewhere here in the middle of the sketch looks okay finish the sketch and quite simple uh, we are doing the first one here with just creating a pipe so go to pipe select the curve and give it a section size of five millimeters you see here it's not uh, long enough so I'm just going here to new body so that I can make it a little bit longer before I join it or just push the, push the line a little bit longer or just go here press pull select the face and push it inside and also second time here 
push inside okay and now I can do my join so do a combine here and here join okay then two fillets one here one here Let's try, no, maybe one is enough, I think. Looks fine. Then for our decoration lines, we have to project these lines on the surface. And um, for that, we will need another sketch. I'm selecting this plane here. We couldn't project without creating a sketch, so that's just a step we have to do. Then create, project, and then project to surface. Then select the faces. Then I go here to the curve selection. One, two, three, four, five. And be sure that here is set to a long vector. And we have to select the projection direction and for that you see here the the errors are already there but we need to select here the the axis showing in this direction and now you see we're getting our red lines here and then I hit OK and I have now my curves here projected on the surface and then we can easily use again the no finish the sketch before sorry the finish sketch and then we can use here the pipe tool again select the path and you see already cutting out but we don't want a cut out because we have to round the corners here before before we do the cut so switch here to new body Section size of 5 mm is fine here and I don't think that no, we can do all together. I would like to do that. Then my sketches are gone again so just scroll down to find my sketches here. I'll just close this. So again, I will repeat that now. Then let's do our fillets. So I'm going to fill it and I'm selecting all just the surfaces on both sides. Let's see if 2.5 works. No, maybe too much. 2.4, yes. This works. So we have a nice rounding. Then OK. And now we can cut these parts out. So activate the combine tool. This is my target body. My two bodies are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the operation set to cut. We won't keep the tools. Um, okay. You see my lovely decoration lines. I will do a fillet also. So, great fillet. And you could actually select here the whole features and it takes the border edges here. Let's try one. Looks awesome. I take this. Okay. Let's check the canvas. Okay, it's a little bit a different position but or maybe the radius is a little bit too much so edit feature just 
zero point seven or something. Yeah, I take this. And last but not least, this little thing here um, on the bottom, also the same technique. So pipe, then I can select this ring here. Here we have to decrease section size three and we can immediately join it. See, looks cool. Okay. So, there it is, our finished, more or less finished outer surface of this hairdryer. Of course, you can do some more details, so have a look at the images. You can create some holes here in the back, and also here's the little detail, so, but I think you know all the techniques that you can do that. Also in front and in the back it's actually some more detail that you could do here inside if you like. I will prepare you some images. As usual I also did a quick little render setup. Nothing special, a little bit of plastics, uh, a decal and yeah that's actually it. So I hope you learned a lot during this tutorial and take a lot of techniques with you to your next project and nothing more to say than wish you a wonderful rest of your day.